one of the many things I wasn't told before I became a father was the vital role that food plays in parenting. At the beginning, you change and feed the baby every two hours. I would perform one of these tasks, and Ashley would take care of the other task. Uh, I would take care of her as, as she did that, you know, give her water and snacks and whatnot. Then as they get older, you think, okay, they won't need to eat as often, right? I can see some knowing looks out there. So, no, they, they still need to eat just about every two hours. And sometimes there is no gap between eating. They have breakfast, then snack. I always liken this to uh, the hobbits from uh, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings who, who would eat second breakfasts. Then they have lunch and an afternoon snack. And here's where things get tricky because you're thinking, at this point you're thinking, these kids must be hungry all the time. So you make a big meal, you fill their plates with, with full servings, only for them to take two bites and ask to be excused from the table. Now we know that Ivy, Jane, and Ruthie Faye are going to want a bedtime snack in an hour or so, so but, but we excuse Ivy Jane from the table and we, we, with the reminder that her plate will be there waiting for her when she wants that bedtime snack. God provides for us in the same way. He fills our plates full of blessings. He not only provides for our needs, he gives abundantly above and beyond our needs. And I mean this in two ways. First, as Jesus tells us in Matthew, God clothes and feeds us. He knows the things that we need. After many years of praying for wealth and professional success, my practice has now become asking God to provide me with what I need to live and to serve Him. So my family has our little house that we bought back in 2018. It was built in 1983, so... It's been fun keeping up with all of those things. We have a food in the fridge and our little freezer in the garage, both filled up with food. We have clothes that have been bought by us or for our daughters, given to us for the most part. I'm employed full time in work that I love and I am so passionate about. And thanks to the generosity of a few, uh, of a, a handful of people, Along with the contributions of the church, we haven't had to pay a single penny for my seminary education. And while that only ever covers the first year, I have faith that God will provide for the second, third, and the fourth year. My cup overflows. Secondly, God provided abundant grace to us when he sent his only son to die on our behalf. We have not only been given the fleeting necessities of this life, but God has provided for our eternal needs as we look to be reconciled to him. So I'll turn now to our passage for the night. It's 2 Corinthians, starting in chapter 9. So go ahead and turn, turn with me in, in your Bibles, in the, the Bibles you have on your phone, in the pews. Follow along with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Starting in verse 6. The point is this. The person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the person who sows generously will also reap generously. Each person should do as he has decided in his heart. Not reluctantly or out of compulsion. Since God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make everything, every grace Overflow to you so that in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. As it is written, he distributed freely. He gave to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. We are clothed in Christ and called to live a new life in his grace and mercy. God blesses us abundantly out of love for his son. Because Jesus died in order for us to live. 2 Corinthians that verse 8 there says, And God is able to make every grace overflow to you so that in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. Grace overflows to you. You are provided 
with all your needs so that you may excel in every good work, namely distributing freely and giving to the poor. And here's where things start to get cool, starting in chapter, in verse 10. Now the one who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will also provide them and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for all generosity, which produces thanksgiving to God through us. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many expressions of, God, of thanks to God. Because of the proof provided by this ministry, they will glorify God for your obedient confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone. And as they pray on your behalf, they will have deep affection for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. So let's break this down a bit. Who provides seed for the sower and bread to eat? God, right? So God will multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. God has and will always provide for your needs, specifically the things you need to live. God provides for you above and beyond those needs as you are using your blessings in service to him and to others. Verses 11 and 12 say, You'll be rich in every way for all generosity, which produces thanksgiving to God through us. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. What this is saying is, when we live lives based on generosity, thanksgiving overflows to God through us. Our very lives are an act of thanksgiving we are expressions of thanksgiving when we give generously, and our thanksgiving to God multiplies. How does that happen first? We are thankful for the blessings that God has given to us. Then, those who we are generous toward are thankful for what God has provided through us, and they are thankful for us as well. Imagine what would happen if that person, that person that you're generous to, responded to generosity with generosity of their own towards others. And the next person and the next person, thankfulness multiplies. And it happens when we are generous with what God has already provided to us. As some of you may be getting uncomfortable at this point. Is he about to ask for money? No. No. Now, I will say we, we need it to keep this building and this church operating. I need it to stay in seminary. But I'm not only talking about money tonight. I'm talking about generosity. And that is a way of life. Generosity does include opportunities to share wealth and possessions that, that we've been blessed with. But it's more than that. When you see a need, do you think, how much is this going to cost me? Or, how can I help? There's a slight but important difference there. Do you suddenly take stock of what you can't let go of? Or, do you try to figure out what you could live without? Do you avoid that friend who's planning a move because... You know they're going to want to borrow your truck? See, generosity begins in the heart. And on this occasion, Thanksgiving Eve, as we remember the way God has blessed us above and beyond our needs, it's a good take time to take stock of your heart for generosity. Again, generosity is not only about money, but I should point out that Paul, in this letter to the, to the Corinthians is talking about money specifically. Offering money and possessions is a great way to put your faith on display. Faith that God will always provide for what you need. Other than that, there are other ways to show generosity. I, and I always think about the necessities first. 
I've identified three plus a couple others. The first one is give food. Whether that's buying a meal for somebody, whether it's, whether it's bringing food uh, to, to our little food shelf over here that we take to need. Whatever that is. Maybe it's going down and serving at the soup kitchen. Providing for a necessity that somebody needs is a way to show them that God provides. Second, you can give clothing. Give clothing. This is, again, another way, another easy way to provide for the physical needs of somebody. And generally, in this country, we have so many more clothes than we need. So many clothes that don't quite fit right anymore, so you haven't worn them for months or even years. Those can be a blessing to somebody. Just going through your closet and, and emptying it out and taking it to somebody else can be a true blessing to them. Third, give shelter. And I mean this with, with friends and family. You can give them a place to stay in your home when they come into town. Oftentimes, because of the cost of hotels, that's like putting money straight into their pockets. Just giving them a place to stay when they come to visit, when they're in town for that conference, whatever it is. If you see somebody homeless, maybe you help point them in the direction of a shelter. We have all of these capabilities nearby to provide food, clothing, and shelter. These next two are a little abstract, but also very important. The fourth one is give time. Give time. When you're talking to somebody, don't constantly look at your watch. Don't think about the next thing that you're going to do. Be present with them and listen to what they have to say. That can make somebody feel so important. And give yourself. Be open to others. Share love and kindness with those you meet and be willing to enter into a new relationship. It's not perfect. I'm sure this list is incomplete, but it's a starting point. God has said he will provide for our needs. Do you ever think that maybe you are the way that God is providing for someone else's need? That your generosity could provide? God will provide, but he put you where you're at and gave you the things that you have in order to be his gospel messenger in the world. According to our passage in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 11, you will be enriched in every way for all generosity, which produces thanksgiving to God through us. Your act of generosity, of just responding to God's call for, your, for you to be generous, will result in thanksgiving to him through us. If you want to show thankfulness to God during this holiday season, between Thanksgiving and New Year's, be generous to others. And I'll finish by reading a passage from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. As I do, I want you to imagine that Paul is writing this to Peace Lutheran Church in Hearst, Texas. To this gathering of disciples. Starting in verse 2. We always thank God for all of you, making mention of you constantly in our prayers. We recall in the presence of our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor motivated by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Because our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power, in the Holy Spirit, and with full assurance, you know how we lived among you for your benefit. And you yourselves became imitators of us and of the Lord when, in spite of severe persecution, you welcomed the message with joy from the Holy Spirit. As a result, you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. If individual members of peace and peace as a whole begin to live their lives based on generosity, thanksgiving to our God and creator will be poured out in abundance. Your works produced out of love and generosity 
can and should be an example to the believers and the non-believers. In Hearst, Tarrant County, Texas, and beyond. In his precious name, amen.